Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to talk about 2D analysis. So in real life everything is three-dimensional. We do not have any 1D or 2D models. But as engineers we simplify our models into 1D like bar, beam, truss that we earlier talked or into 2D models to simplify our analysis. In case of 2D models we have three choices. Plane stress, which means that our stresses are acting only on one plane. Plane strain, we have strains only on one plane, or axisymmetric. In case of plane stress, as the name suggests, stresses are only acting on one plane that we usually refer to as XY plane, which means that the stresses in Z directions are zero. We have three components of a stress with, uh, in Z direction. Two shear stresses, and then one normal stress. So if I show you the 3D state, we have nine components of a stress. But because we have symmetry between shear stresses, we have six, component, six independent components of stress. In case of plane stress, that's reduced into three components. Or in a matrix format, we are reducing from three by three matrix, nine components or six independent components to only three components. So you can see there is a significant simplification when we make a plane stress assumption. Uh, one thing that you need to remember is that a plane stress is not a plane strain. We have a strains in Z direction, epsilon ZZ is not zero because of Poisson effect. Whenever we have sigma X or sigma Y, we are going to have strain in Z direction as well. Example of plane stress, uh, you can simplify your model into plane stress when one dimension is much smaller than the other dimension, such that the variation of a stress can be neglected in, in the direction of thickness or Z direction. So if we have a plate with a very shallow thickness, this plate can be simplified as plane stress. Uh, so we need to have two conditions. One is the geometry condition, which tells us that one dimension must be smaller than the other two dimension. In this case, is thickness. The other is the loading. Both conditions must be met so we can make this simplification. We only need to have stresses in X and Y. We can have both normal and shear stresses. But if we have a model that we have stresses towards Z direction, if we have a thin plate that is under compression, that is true that the geometry condition is made, but the loading condition is not met. So both conditions should be present so we can make that assumption. And our stresses should not change within thickness. So they should be only function of X and Y. So now we are going to look at into comp compliance metrics for our plane stress. So here I'm showing you the compliance metrics for a 3D isotropic material. In case of plane stress, that means that our stress is in Z direction or zero. So I can say that sigma ZZ is zero, YZ, and XZ. We want to simplify our compliance matrix for our plane stress condition. But here we have sigma XX is present, sigma YY can be present, and sigma XY. So we have three components here. So if sigma ZZ is zero, does not necessarily mean that epsilon ZZ is zero, because epsilon ZZ would be minus nu E times sigma XX plus minus nu E times sigma YY. So if our stresses in plane XY are present, we have epsilon ZZ. So we have epsilon X, epsilon Y, epsilon Z. Gamma YZ is not present because it's simply 1 over G times sigma Y. Y, Z, that is zero. This one is not present, but we have here. So we have four components here. So how are we going to write our compliance metrics if our stresses uh, 
have four compo three components and a restraint four component. Simply, we are going to box this and then separate it from the rest. It's not zero, but we are going to write it separately. So we are going to write our plain stresses with their corresponding strains and report epsilon zz separately because we want our compliance metrics to uh, be a square. We don't want to have a three by four matrix. After finding the compliance metrics for the plane stress, then we can inverse, uh, the inverse of that would be our elasticity matrix or is referred to as a stiffness matrix. Because in FEA, if you use a stiffness matrix separately, that's why I don't want to refer to it as, as a stiffness matrix. Uh, so the inverse of our compliance would be simply our elasticity matrix. So for the case of plain stress, first we find our compliance because we have the we have information about the right side of the equation. We have information about our stresses. We apply our stresses, then we find our reduced compliance matrix. We take an inverse of that and we'll get our elasticity matrix that we use for plane stress problems. Plane strain, as the name suggests, strains in z-direction would be zero. Uh, the condition is that one dimension must, must be higher than the other two dimensions. So it's the opposite of plane stress. The thickness should be very large. Also, the cross-section must be the same throughout the thickness. So for plane stress, we had one dimension much smaller. That was the plane stress. Here, plane strain would be the opposite. So displacement and also displacements are only function of x and y direction. So if you're looking at a Cartesian coordinate, x, y, and z, and if I have my displacement, I only have displacement in x and y direction. I assume that w, the displacement in z direction, would be 0. Uh, so an example of that would be a long pipe or a thick solid. So if you have, instead of a thin plate, here I have a thick plate that I have a st a strains only on plane x, y. And the rest of our strains are, are very small. You can think of it as a strains in z direction is zero because this the thickness in that direction is very high. And when the denominator is very high, therefore the whole thing is zero. Also gamma xy xz would be simply half of change of u with respect to z plus displacement in z with respect to x. Here we know w is zero, and here we know u is not function of z. That's why gamma xz would be zero. Similarly, gamma yz would be zero as well. Similar to plane stress development in plane strain, we do not necessarily have plane stress because uh, stresses might be present through the thickness. We have a thick objects and stresses are changing. In the case of plane stress, because our object was very thin, we could assume that there is no variation of stresses in, in z direction. But here we cannot make that assumption. So stresses in z will not be zero. An example of plane strain could be pressure of a water behind a dam. So you have your cross section. We have our forces here. And because this dimension is much higher than the others, we can only model our uh, cross section. So the cross section is uniform along the thickness, along the length. Uh, so that satisfies that condition. And also one dimension is much higher than the other dimensions. That's also uh, another condition that is met. And I can simply model this instead of mo modeling the whole dam. And in FEA, you would see that 
such simplification would be very computationally efficient. I'm looking at elasticity matrix here for the case of 3D, but because we have plane strain, I can set these to zero and simplify my elasticity matrix. This is my elasticity matrix for a plane strain. It's different than the elasticity matrix for plane stress. So you, we are developing them separately because they are different. And if I take inverse of that, I will get the compliance matrix. So in case of plane stress, I first found compliance and then elasticity matrix. Here, I'm following the opposite approach. I find elasticity matrix first and then the compliance matrix because I have information about the right side here, about the strains. So I have to write it in, in form of a stress as equal elasticity matrix times my uh, strain matrix. Axisymmetric is the third configuration of a 2D model. So in axisymmetric model, we are not dealing with Cartesian coordinates, but with a cylindrical coordinates that has three axes the radial axis or the radial coordinate, which is the distance from the axis of revolution. Let's say we have uh, this here. So we have our three axes. We have R, we have Z, and theta would be the angle, would be our circumference uh, coordinate. So we have axisymmetric condition when the displacement, strains, and stresses are independent of the circumferential coordinate. So they are independent of that theta. An example of that condition could be when we have a cylinder or a disc under uniform loading. This uniform loading is not function of theta. So I can simplify it if I draw simply draw a rectangle here and this rectangle is you can think of it as a, a revolution around this axis axis AA and I apply my pressure and these two are equivalent instead of modeling this 3D geometry I can model this 2D under axis symmetric condition and I will get the same result. Uh, we can develop the compliance and elasticity matrices uh, for axisymmetric as well. Again, it's not a Cartesian coordinate, so a little bit different. One thing that you need to pay attention here, here we have both, we have four components of strains and four components of stresses. So sigma theta z and r theta are zero, but sigma theta theta is not zero. So our compliance matrix is a four by four matrix. So here in summary, in 2D, plane strain, plane stress, and axisymmetric all look the same. But if you are assuming a plane strain condition, then that means that one dimension is much larger than the other one. So we are dealing with uh, a very thick a plate for plane stress one dimension is much smaller than the other one and for axis symmetric we have revolution about the axis